Greetings and welcome to the Golf Betting Show. Steve Bamford from Golf Betting System. I take it that you are well. We are covering the final tournament of the PGA Tour in 2020, the Maya Coba Golf Classic. Welcome to the show. Excited. Back after a week's grace. We have Maya Coba this week. We then, on the European Tour, have the season ending DP World Tour Championship. And then we have a few weeks off before. 2020-2021 golf starts. They all merge into one year after year, believe me. Okay, so the Mike Cobra this week, it's going to be, a, well, to be fair, the field's decent, so I'm really excited for it. The Golf Betting Show is for viewers of 18 and above. Please be gamble aware. You can visit begambleaware.org for more information. And of course, please bet responsibly. Now, I want to talk you through um, liking the show, subscribing to the show, and of course, I want to know from you guys in the comments below, just your views on the Mycoba this week, who you fancy, who you don't fancy, just any con feedback around the content, what you might want to have uh, in the future and stuff like that. Just talk to me. It's great to chat to my YouTube friends. As ever, I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, the amount of likes, if we can get through 100 likes this week at the Mayakoba, it would be absolutely fantastic. It's going to be a relatively uh, low level of views because who's betting on golf right now? It's quite a niche sport compared to football, American football and the likes. But I would love you to like the show, subscribe to the show and ensure that your notifications are switched on. All of the content at golfbettingsystem.co.uk is free of charge. By you liking the show, subscribing to the show, and also listening to the Golf Betting System podcast, it helps us to keep all of that content completely free of charge, no paywall. We need our content to be ranked by Google and by you doing your bit at home. It's effectively driving that. So I'll leave it to you. Drive the show for us, the Golf Betting Show on YouTube. We have the predictor model, of course, which I'm going to go through in a few minutes. Um, I'll take you also through the agronomy and of the golf course and where they're playing this week. But please like, please subscribe. I think we're almost up to 1,400 subscribers, which considering we opened up this Steve Bamford YouTube channel, oh, when was it? Post-COVID. We're doing, oh, post-COVID resumption. We're doing okay. So thank you one and all for your subscribes and let me know. Hit me up. Let me know. What, who and uh, who you fancy this week at the Maya Akoba. Okay, the Maya Akoba. I'm impressed by the field, it has to be said. Um, the hit and giggle, the Tiger World Challenge uh, has been canned this year. Um, so you're getting a few of the better players playing this as the gap in their schedule. Justin Thomas, I doubt, will be venturing to the DP World Tour Championship in Dubai next week. Noble Brooks Kepka. Harris English is playing. I am seeing Harris English. If you'd have said this to me 12 months ago, Harris English was a 55 to 1 shot for the Mike Over Gold Classic. Um, everyone in the in the betting community was on him. Um, he gave us a good run for our money, uh, coming up a couple of shots shiny in Brendan Todd. Um, but if you were to say to me 12 months ago that, that uh, Harris English, 12 months down the line, after not winning a golf tournament, by the way, would be a 12 to 1 chance this week with Skybet. I would say, I would have told you that you were in absolute cloud cuckoo land, but he is. He's a 12 to 1 shot with Skybet for this. What an absolutely disgraceful price. Daniel Berger's playing, Abraham Anser, um, the home hero, Tony Fee now. Wow, it's a, it's a proper non-winner's gallery, this one. Victor Hovland, Russell Henley and Ricky Fowler. Corey Connors, Will Zanatoris and Joachim the Wunderkind Neiman. It's a better field than they normally get at the Mycoba. And that's good. It's good to see. And it's uh, proof that the PGA Tour's policy on getting players to add different tournaments to their schedule is undoubtedly working. Right. So where's this played? It's played in Playa del Carmen, which looks like a, a piece of the globe that I would like to get to eventually 
once, you know, we can actually jump on a plane and go and have some kind of holiday. El Chameleon Golf Course, Playa del Carmen, Mexico. It's a Greg Norman design from 2006. It's been on the PGO Tour since 2007, so there are masses of course history, um, masses of results here, and just a f you get a feel for how this golf course plays. I think it's changed recently. Um, it used to be quite a technical test um, when it first came on the PGO Tour, but since it's joined the wraparound schedule and it's a fully-fledged $7 million tournament with a uh, master's invite for the winner, um, all of a sudden it's become well, it's a result golf course, effectively. Um, two sets of nines. One follows the coast a lot more. One is very more is it more inland. Um, it's uh, also got mangroves and places where if you drive the ball inaccurately, inaccurately you can make some big numbers. So um, in terms of difficulty rank, 2018, 39 of 49 course on the PGO Tour. 2019 is the last season. It ranks as the 21st most difficult of 41 courses. To me, it's the kind of course that if you can be a strategist, um, if you can hit the ball in the right spots on the fairways or miss on the right spots on the fairways and not hit it in the mangroves and the water um, and make doubles and trebles, if you can strategize your way around here, you don't have to be long off the tee. Accurate helps very much so. Um, and if you're a great wedge player and putter, it's a, it's a course for you. You can really go low here. The actual course features intense bunkering. The green complexes are big, especially as this is a sub 7,000 yard golf course at 6987. The actual, um, there's a series of canals that run through the entire property, bordering the majority of holes. And that's the point here. You can get wet quickly. It is not a Tony Finau golf course, so get that out of your mind. Um, the actual course itself, uh, 7,000 square feet on average. Uh, green complexes, they're pretty flat. Sea Isle 1, Paspalum, the greens. Now, Paspalum, there are, uh, there are similar greens at Cocoa Beach Golf and Country Club, the Puerto Rico Open. Tony Fee now, Victor Hogman. And the Corrales Golf Club, the Corrales uh, Championship, which they played now, what is it, three times on the PGA Tour, and they played it three times on the Corn Ferry, so there's lots of history of players that can play well on Paspalum there. And they also played on Paspalum Greens between 2013 and 2017. Uh, on, this is on the PGA Tour at TPC Kuala Lumpur, the CIMB Classic. Won twice by Justin Thomas. Clearly, Justin Thomas could walk this. And probably will. Greg Norman designs. TPC San Antonio. The Valero Texas Open from 2009 onwards. Also, uh, there's some old history at TPC Sugarloaf. 1997 through 2008 AT&T Classic. And of course, for European Tour. Home is the Earth Course. Where they play next week the DP World Tour Championship. That looks like it's going to be a star-studded Field uh, with top six in the race to Dubai plus I think they've invited uh, eight players that are in the top 70 in the world who haven't qualified. You know, your Henrik Stenson, and Ian Poulter, yeah. Ian Poulter? I don't know. players of that ilk. So it should be loaded and hopefully some good PGA Tour representation as well. Patrick Reed, uh, Colin Marokawa, Sung Jae. So yeah, it should be good. Anyway, back to this. That's the course in a nutshell. Um, I don't see a lot of wind. That's the course's defence. Um, it could rain heavily on Thursday. It could be a washout like we saw last year when the whole of Thursday there was no play. I think it's going to be soft and there's no wind. Um, 20, 22 under, yeah. That happens. Can happen here. Probably will happen here. If the wind gets up, that's when the scoring just eases back. But I haven't seen that in any forecasts. So that's where we're at. The Protector Top 10 next. At Golf Betting System, my betting preview is available. I can't link it in the description box because YouTube doesn't like links to websites. So 
Um, golf betting system, it's easy to find. Search for our system, there's all of the betting previews for the week, bearing in mind there's two European Tour events as well. Um, predictor models, event stats, first round leader stats, average score stats around it, all available at Golf Betting System. Completely free of charge, no paywall. Come to Golf Betting System. Um, as part of that, the predictor model, loads of variables on there. Who plays well by the coast? Who plays well on pass, bar and greens over the last five years? Who is the best resort golfer over the last five years? Rolling numbers, all available. Who plays well on soft golf courses? It's there. It's there for you. I pulled my model together yesterday, Monday. I'm recording this Tuesday morning over here in the UK. Beautiful sunny day out there, blue sky. Not that you needed to know that. But I take you through my top 10 bookmaker of the week. I haven't mentioned these guys for a while. Paddy Power. Eight places each way, a 50 odds at the, uh, uh, the Mycoba Golf Classic. We're also in a scenario with Paddy Power where if you open up a new account via golf betting system, they offer... A £20 or €20 Euro if you're in the Republic of Ireland. Free, uh, risk-free bet for your first bet. So you can bet up to £20 on a player or players. Or, yeah. And it would be player, really. Because it's your first bet and it has to be a single. So player. And if your player doesn't win, you receive your full stake back in cash. You need the promo code YSKAEE when registering. And you have to register by a golf betting system. But Paddy Power, eight places each way, every week, full field, PGA Tour. And they've been uh, 10 places each way at all the majors this year. I think they ranked number two for 2020 in each way places behind Boyle Sports. So in my personalised ranking, I ranked uh, driving accuracy very importantly here. 10, Abraham answer, 20 to 1, William Hill, eight places. If I mention each way places, all are 50 odds. Nine, Kyle Stanley, another one of these fairway and greens kind of guys. Has done well in Puerto Rico in the past on Paspalum. 125 to 1 with Paddy Power, eight places each one. Eight is Ryan Armour. He's the biggest here in the top 10. 250 to 1 with Bet Fred, seven places each one. Seven, Ches Reeve, fighting for his life in the world's top 50. It's now or never for Reeve if he wants to stay in the top 50 and get. A master's invite dropping on his doormat before Christmas. 80 to 1 with Boyle Sports, eight places each way. Six is Russell Henley, very much in the same boat. Has a great week, gets in the world's top 50. An Augusta invite landing on his doormat before Christmas. 25 to 1 with Paddy Power, eight places. Five is Brendan Top, the defending champion. 50 to 1 with Paddy Power, eight places. Four is Corey Connors, again. Right in the mix. I think he's 54th in the world. Good week this week. He gets that Masters invite. 33 to 1 with William Hill, eight places each way. It's staring these guys in the face. Streelman, Reavy, Henley, Connors. Which one of those guys, if any, is going to step up to the plate and grab that world top 50 spot or keep? Uh, I think Reavy now and Streelman have dropped out. But who's going who's gonna to take that 50 spot? Three, Brooks Kepka. Uh, Connors was 33 to 1 with William Hill, eight places each way. Three is Brooks Kepka, 11 to 1 with Paddy Power, eight places each way. Two, Ricky Fowler, 30 to 1 with William Hill, eight places each way. Fowler is 49th in the world. It's now or never for Ricky. Now or never. There's no hit and giggle ne uh, next week or anything like that that's going to add world ranking points. He could, dr he could jump on a private jet and play in Dubai. He might have to. But Ricky Fowler, 30 to 1 with William Hill, 8 places each way. And number 1, Justin Thomas, 13 to 2 with William Hill, 8 places each way. So Thomas, Fowler, I did. Uh, Fowler has not landed an each way place, not, not a win, an each way place for his backers in a full field event since the 2019 Open Championship. I was, if Ricky Fowler had been 50 to 1, yeah, I'm on it, but you're not going to get that, and it's 30 to 1. Two Fowler, three Brooks Kepka. Okay, so I've done stats. Winning totals here. Brendan top 20 to 1 last year. Matt Kuchar 22 to 1. That's the target to beat this week. Kat Kazaya 19s. Perez 21s. Graham McDowell 18 to 1. The last five winners here. It shouts, doesn't it? Harbour Town. 
It shouts Sony Open at Wireline. It shouts Kapalua, where most of these guys have played well, the plantation course, the, um, the tournament of champions. You know, that's where we're at. There's a little bit of south wind in there as well. TPC south wind, because Harris English has won there. McDowell's done well there. Um, it's quite a simple track in terms of course correlations. Courses by the sea, short Bermuda golf courses. I know it's passable, but you, you know, they, they can't play kind of similar. I know that the top, um, my eight week predictor model, uh, eight week um, tracker stats are available in my preview at Golf Bank System. Really useful, all free of charge. You don't need to pay for them. I just give them to you. I rank the players, strokes gained, and the traditional statistics. I'll take you through some top 10s this week. The full top 25 is available at my, on my betting preview, Golf Bank System. Driving, actually, I think that's important this week. Answer is at one, Bradley two. Wesley Bryan and Henrik Norlander tie third. Chris Baker at five, the birdie maker. Six is Adam Long, seven Mark Hubbard, eight Ryan Armour with Russell Henley, John Huh, and Cameron Percy. Top 12, Corey Connors, Brendan Todd. Greens in regulation, top 10. Will Zalatoris at one, Victor Hovland at two, Tringali at three. He's been playing some great stuff. Four is Johnson Wagner, a winner around here. Five is Joachim Vavundekin Neiman. Six is Henrik Norlander with Justin Thomas. Eight, Abraham Anson. Nine, Corey Connors. Tied 10, Brian Harmon and Mark Leishman. Okay, let's talk strokes gained, shall we? Strokes gained T to green, top 10, last eight weeks on the PGA Tour and European Tour combined. One, Will Zalatoris. Two, Justin Thomas. Three, Russell Henley tied with Joachim Neiman and Scott Piercy, who has a decent record around here, Piercy. Six is Victor Hovland. Seven is Roger Sloan. Don't ask. Eight, Corey Connors. Nine, Brun, Br Brian Benny Ann. Tied with Brooks Kepka. Eleven is Peter Malnati. Twelve is Keegan Bradley, who's playing some nice stuff. If Bradley could putt, he'd be dangerous. He does well on soft golf courses. Bradley is not a bad look this week. I'll also take you through to the top ten strokes gained approach, because I think that's important this week. One, Seb Stracker tied with Will Zalatoris. Three is Henley. Four is Bradley again. Five is JT. Six, the Enigma, Emiliano Grio. Never bet him. Seven, Daniel Berger and Brian Stewart. Nine, Benny Ann. Ten, Roger Sloan and Camillo Vijegas. And then I'll take you through the top ten strokes gained total. That is strokes gained current form. One, Zalatoris. Two, Justin Thomas. Three, Joachim Wunderkin Neiman. Four, Patton Kazaya and Brooks Kepka. Six, Tony Finau and Cameron Trinjungali. Eight is Russell Henley and Roger Sloan. This Roger Sloan guy. And ten, tied, Abraham Anser and Daniel Berger. If you're looking for hot putters, one, Todd. Two, Garnett. Goes brilliantly here. Garnett at DraftKings has to be, has to be a play. Three, Tony Finau. Four, Tony Finau. Third strokes game putt in the last eight weeks. Wow. Four, Pat and Kazaya with Hunter Mayhan. There's a name from the blast from the past. Six is Chess and Hadley and Bo Hosler. Uh, Paul Williams will be tipping him up, no doubt. Eight is Brooks Kepka and Justin Thomas. And ten, tied Daniel Berger and Oli Schneider Dan, Snyder Jan. So there, those are my rolling top tens this week. Full 25s available at Golf Betting System in my betting preview. Winners, prices, and now we're getting to the nitty-gritty here. I'll take you since this became a, a wraparound season event. English, 25 to 1. That's the shortest. Hoffman, 60 to 1. McDowell, 33 to 1. Perez, 125s. Kizaya 70s, Kuchar 60s, Todd 110 coming straight back to back off of the Bermuda Championship win. So that averages out the past seven renewals at 69 to 1, a 70 to 1 average price winning this golf tournament. I have, I've just shunned the likes of Harris English. If he wins, who cares? 
I have shunned Abraham Anser. I have shunned Daniel Berger. If Justin Thomas wins, win only, fill your boots. Um, Brooks Kepka, I doubt he gives a crap. Um, Abraham Anser, yeah, if you want to lump on Abraham Anser, who is as short as 16 to 1 this week, on the vote, hope that he wins his first ever PGA Tour result win in Mexico, the first Mexican to win in Mexico, you fill your boots at 16 to 1. Fee now. These guys, Hovland I was interested in. Hovland I was very interested in. He won in Puerto Rico earlier this year, past Fulham Greens. Putted nicely in Houston. Um, I think you'll see Hovland hop on a private jet and go to Dubai. Play out there. 28, yeah, I'd have been involved. 22, best price with uh, one bookmaker, Unibet. 20s and 18s, just, just doesn't float my boat. Fowler, again, 40s, yeah, I'd have gone in for 30s. And he's only 30 to 1 at one firm, William Hill. 22 to 1 in a lot of places. Oh my God, it's terrible. Corey Connors. He's certainly got some good form coming in. But Fowler, Connors, um, Todd, Streelman, they and Munoz, these guys are more into Streelman, Todd, um, also Fowler, and we've also got Connors because none of those guys played the Tour Championship. Munoz, he played the Tour Championship. He's unlocked all of the big tournaments next year. Those guys haven't. It's a big deal to end this year in the top 50. That's a huge pressure for players of a Russell Henley kind of stature. He could thrive. I didn't see much thriving two weeks ago in the RSM Classic. That's the point. And the putter goes cold. He needs to free his mind to putt well. And that's difficult when you've got this pressure of a world top 50 spot on your shoulders. Connors, got to putt well. Will it be the week where he's got to deliver? I'm not so sure. So... For me, I do like the angle of official world golf rankings. The best we've had here, I know the field's a little bit stronger this year, but they've had some decent fields here, don't, don't get me wrong. Um, English was 68th in the world. Hoffman was 90th. McDowell was 82nd. Kuchar 40th. He's the lowest in terms of world golf ranking to have won around here. And then 2017, 2018, 2019. 271st, Perez. 236th Kaziah, 185 Todd, and they were hot into this. So I'm kind of there or thereabouts with some players in that warmish OWGR area who could do, again, with a great week, and also some players that have got hot form but further out in the world golf rankings. That's where I've, that's where I've gone with this. I want players that have been up hitting the ball nicely recently, Guys that have been in plenty of fairways and tons and tons of greens. And I've left it that simple. I got five. Every you know, answer, 16 to 1, 18 to 1. Oh, get on Abraham answer. The guy that people are forgetting here is Carlos Ortiz. Now I managed to get on Ortiz yesterday, and there's still a bit of there's still this around. 50 to 1 with Unibet, six places each way. I've got one and a quarter points of Carlos Ortiz. And Ortiz, one last time out in Houston, hit tons of greens, putted lights out, and his record here is decent. He ranked, and this this actually genuinely surprised me with uh, Ortiz. He ranks um, in the top. 65 in the world right now. So if he actually has a good week, like uh, Christian Bezadenhut last week in Joburg, oh, sorry, Alfred Dunhill, he jumps into the world's top 50. And he's, he hasn't got pressure or expectation on him because he's Carlos Ortiz. The, all the pressure's on Abraham Anser. Uh, Ortiz will come here absolutely buoyant with confidence, he saw off Dustin Johnson in that head-to-head, -head, two man clash, mano a mano, in Houston and beat him. Has Augusta off, put his feet up, have a few drinks, have a few tequilas, watches the Masters, didn't play the RSM, had another week off. 
He did exactly the same last year. Fourth in, or fourth in Houston, came here and had a big, big chance of winning. Finished second in the end. Had a very big chance of beating Brendan Todd. Why isn't he going to do that again when he's actually playing brilliant golf and has just come off a head-to-head -head victory with, Car with Dustin Johnson? Um, and also with Ortiz, I remember back in 2014 when he came off the Corn Ferry, he had the same kind of fanfare as a Will Zalatoris. He, was, he, he, was, he won three times on the Corn Ferry and he had a very a tight space of time where he finished um, third in Colombia and then he had two wins in three appearances in Panama and Mexico. And this is the point. This, these um, Latin America um, places, this is where Ortiz's game is at. Um, he had a form line of 22-1, 17-1, 9-3 back in 2014 when he was confident buoyant. I can see him doing exactly the same. I can see him going very close this week, Carlos Ortiz, at 50 to 1. He's a forgotten man. Everyone's on our answer. He's the obvious man. Final group at the Masters, but he just doesn't win. <laughs> he hasn't won on the PGA Tour. I think Ortiz, 50 to 1, decent punt this week. I really do. And what better, eh? A Mexican winning in Mexico. Bear in mind he finished second here last year. Abraham Anser didn't finish second here last year. And again, he had all the pressure, had a short arms, was going to do the business. It was Ortiz, who's already won in Mexico. He won the 2014 Mexico Championship that they played on the Corn Ferry. So he's won in his homeland. He comes here in the shadow of Anser. But he can, you know, he plays well on this golf course. He's coming off a win. And we saw last year. We saw with Brendan Todd, one in Bermuda, one this. It happens. One and a quarter points each way. 50 to one with um, Unibet, Carlos Ortiz. What a best way. Eh? First Mexican to win in Mexico on the PGA Tour. And even if he finished something like second, he's got a very good chance of grabbing a top 50 spot in the world. Carlos Ortiz. Another player I think is crazy in terms of his price. It's the only bit of value I can see with an elite player. Um, six, uh, Pat Mayo mentioned on his show, 60-1 um, DraftKings Sportsbook in the States. Good God, that's a must. Mark Leishman, I've picked him up 55-1 to one this side of the Atlantic with Unibet again. One and a quarter points each way. Mark Leishman played brilliantly at Augusta. T to green game was brilliant. Ball striking was fantastic. And when I watched Leishman, he was hitting tons and tons of fairways. And that is Leishman's trouble. Um, this year, started well, didn't he? One at Torrey Pines, second at the at Bay Hill, Arnold Palmer. And then the ball striker just fell apart. COVID fell apart, post-COVID. But 13th last time out at the Masters was his best major finish for a couple of years. T, T to Green game was brilliant. He was 16th for driving accuracy, 5th for greens in regulation, 6th for total accuracy, and 4th for ball striking. And that's Leachman's bugbear. His ball striking had turned to absolute tat. Back with the ball striking. He's 37 years old. He's won five times on the PGO Tour. Um, he wins big events. And he's great by the coast. 7th and 4th at Kapalua. 9th, 5th and 3rd at Wileye, the Sony Open. You know, we've had so many Open winners win here in Mass, Kuch, Kuchar and Kizaya. Todd's done well there. Oh, that link is strong. It, it just screamed Mark Leishman to him. He's done absolutely nothing since COVID resumption. He found his game at Augusta. Is he going to come here and just have a laugh, Mr. Cut? I know he plays next week at the um, QBE shootout with Cameron Smith. Is he using this as just a warm? I think he's using this just to actually, I'm playing some great golf. Let's see how far we can go this week, Mark Leishman. I think uh, he's played here in the past. Nothing spectacular. I think it was top 20, something like that. Um, yeah, why not? 24th and 2016 when he played here last. I think he'll go well, Mark Leishman. That price, 55 to 1. Brilliant. Next up, there was a. When I was writing his tip yesterday morning, he was at 90, He got priced up with ninety to one with Paddy Power. I was all over it like a rash. Uh, that got smashed within ten minutes. 
70 to 1. I've got the 70 to 1. We've had about eight plays each way. Adam Long, 30 last year. He is tearing it up. Um, last two outings, 10th for driving accuracy, 8th for greens and regs, 2nd for total accuracy at Memorial Park, the Houston Open. 6th uh, for driving accuracy, 7th for greens and regulation, 1st for total accuracy and 6th for ball striking, 5th and 11th for strokes gain on approach. He also ranked 10th and 7th for strokes gain tee to green at both those respective events. He is tearing it up from tee to green. He likes pass balloon greens. Second year last year, I'm all over it. Adam Long, 70 to 1 with Paddy Power. And then, Adam Long, by the way, is also one of these guys that's in a decent official world golf ranking spot. 75th. That fits well with that narrative I was telling you about further, you know, further on, on up the show. 75th, that would fit perfectly. 70 to 1, that fits perfectly. Adam Long. And then two at triple digits. I would have liked more on them. By the way, Andrew Putnam. I haven't tipped him. Andrew Putnam. I think he's well worthy of support this week. Putnam. Again, Sony Open. Played uh, second at Southwind. He's starting to hit greens. Andrew Putnam. I would like bigger on both of these last two tips, but mm, I don't price the prices. Um, I've got triple digits. I'm happy with that. I've got eight places each way on both with Paddy Power. Brian Gay. Bermuda Championship 2019. Brendan Todd won that after playing gaff for months. Hadn't won for years. Came here, won the Mayakoba Golf Classic at 110 to 1. Brian Gay played naff for months. Hadn't won for years. Why can't he come to El Comedian where he's won in the past? And you just look at where. He has his five PGA Tour wins. El Chameleon here in 08. Harbour Town 09. Southwind 09. PGA West 2013. Bermuda 2020. It's perfect. It's a wedge golf course. He's hitting fairways. He's hitting lots of greens for Brian Gay. And he's putting lights out. His approach play in Bermuda was out of this world. He can shoot low totals. When he, uh, you know, he's had a 20 under victory, an 18 under victory, a 25 under victory at PJ West. He do, he won't rank well in strokes gained uh, statistics because he's only had one good outing. Models won't pop for Brian Gay, and other people will go, "Well, oh, Brian Gay, he's not going to win twice in a row." They just said exactly the same for Brendan Todd, who didn't pop in models last year. Because he'd only had one good outing. I'll take the 100 to 1 on Brian Gay. A point in each way. And and that's the other thing. Stuart Sink. He won the Safeway Open. The first tournament of this season. Back in September. And then after that he finished 12th. And then he finished 4th. Because these guys know. While you're playing well. You can sew up a FedEx Cup spot. In the playoffs. For August next year. And, not even that, you can actually guarantee yourself a top 70 spot so you don't need to worry about the Northern Trust. You've already got your BMW Championship spot guaranteed and all the extra dollars that are coming with that. You've got, effectively, um, you've already got your master spot sorted out. Let's play good golf. There's no pressure and we're playing well. So Guy, I think he can follow that Stuart Sink and that Brendan Todd narrative from last year. Finally, my opinion of this gentleman's change. I was on him a few weeks ago in Bermuda and the wind blew a little bit too strong for him. This guy flies when the birdies fly. I remember Martin Pillar. Paul Williams loves a bit of Martin Pillar action. Um, a Corn Ferry grad, uh, a perennial winner on the Corn Ferry. He never really cut it on the PGA Tour. But when he did, it was always on these absolute drag strips. No wind, soft courses, short Go out there and just shoot lights out. This guy is exactly the same. Um, sixth at Kapalua, twelfth at Wyalai, eleventh at Pebble Beach, sixteenth at Harbour Town, fifteenth and tenth here at El Camino. So he plays by the coast nicely. He's already a PGA Tour winner. He won 2015 Sanderson Farms Championship. Um, his wins, career wins. And he hails from Knoxville, Tennessee. 
career wins. He has won the 2013 Knoxville Open, the 2015 Brazil Champions event, and the 2015 Silence and Farms. So Tennessee, Brazil, also Mississippi. So he plays well in hotter, humid, warm clays. Likes the agronomy, you know, likes the agronomy, anything Bermuda, anything Paspalum, loves it. And a few, this is his current form. 48th was his last outing at the RSM Classic. 21st in Bermuda, he was the first round leader. He also started very, very fast at the RSM. Fifth and second, he was fifth in um, Shriners Open, which was loaded in Las Vegas, a birdie fest. He was second at Sanderson Farms, again, birdie fest. And that's the point. He ranks in my eight-week eight week skill set trackers. 20th for strokes gained on approach, 25th for greens in regulation. And for this guy, he's an absolutely phenomenal putter. 25th for greens in reg in a field of 144 this week. Sign me up. 25th for strokes gained around the green. 11th for strokes gained T to green out of 144 this week. Sign me up. Third for putting average. Well, this guy's always a red hot putter. And 20th for strokes gained total. Strokes gained current form. Peter Amal Nutty. Hitting fairways, hitting greens, putts lights out. It's going to be calm. It's going to be easy scoring. I'm all over Mal Nutty. 100 to 1 with Paddy Power. There is 125 to 1 out there if you're just going to take five places each way with Bet365. They're the only firm at 125s. Better move quick. So Mal Natty, Brian Gay, Adam Long, Mark Leishman, and Carlos Ortiz. Those are my five for the Maya Cobra Gold Classic. That's my PGA Tour 2020 done and dusted. I will be back next week to cover off the DP World Tour Championship with my European Tour colleague Paul Williams. We'll be covering in all of its glory. I can't wait for that. So smash the like button. Press the subscribe button and make sure your notifications are switched on. And let me know who you are backing this week at the Mayakoba Gold Classic. It's been a pleasure. Really enjoyed it. I'll be back next week for the DP World Tour Championship, the last show of 2020. Thank you for your time. Bet responsibly. Goodbye.